Four, continuing our chat with the candidates for the November 7th Quincy City election. And next up, we welcome into the program Quincy Ward 4 City Council candidate Matthew Lyons is joining us in studio. Good to see you again, Matt. Hi, Joe. How are you today? Doing great. Thanks for coming over and uh, participating in our candidates' discussion series. We appreciate I, that. I appreciate the time. Not the first time uh, it is in front of the cameras here no, at QA TV, yet. right? No, no, no. Yeah, this I, is your uh, second run. It's my second run. I ran in the uh, special election in the winter time and uh, came up a little short but you know looking back on it I see some of the stakes I made and you know at the time I really didn't uh, f see them all, all that glaring as I do now so I'm just uh, trying to uh, learn from my mistakes and get out there and try to rectify it and put up a better fight this time. Yeah was that your first run the first time? It was the first time ever yeah. At elective office? Yeah and it okay. was kind of quick yeah I mean I hate to make make excuses I tell people at the doors when I'm talking to them that you know I don't like to make excuses but I have some okay but uh <laughs> but I don't I won't bother anybody with them today so. Well I guess uh, like all of us we learn from our mistakes right? Yes exactly. Um, so what mistakes did you make that you well, won't I, make this time? Well I just think it was a, it was the time of year I didn't have personally I didn't have the time I didn't have any vacation days left at work and I work 10 hour days so getting out at 4 30 at night at the t at that time it was dark yep. I tried knocking on some doors at and at four after 4 30 and it just didn't work okay. people weren't very receptive to it so I couldn't couldn't do as much and you know I probably was a little overconfident and I probably just uh, that was a big flaw in it so just trying to uh, change that and go about it now and just talk to as many people as I can and get out there and s express my my message and uh, see how it goes. So speaking of work, we should, I guess, uh, take a little step back and let you introduce yourself to folks who might not know you. Sure. I'm Matthew Lyons. Uh, I'm 59 years old this past Saturday. Um, I, um, I'm a 36-year employee with Verizon, uh, IBW 2222. I'm a legislative director for my union, IBW 2222. Um, I'm also on the board of uh, the trustees of uh, Norfolk, Labor, Norfolk County Labor Council as well as on the executive board of uh, the Greater Boston Labor Council. I've been uh, representing working families for over 30 years and uh, in work and outside of work and doing many other activities outside of that and I, that's exactly how I plan to govern from, from uh, the city council is uh, putting people first. And uh, I'm like I sell, tell people outside, I'm not running to serve anybody but the public and Ward 4. And, uh, and that's how I plan to, to be as your, a counselor. Your, uh, your family has a very long history in the city, They right? do. Yeah. So personally, I, I, I was born in Long Island. My dad, my dad grew up on Sheldon Street in East Milton. Half of it's in Milton, half of it's in, in Quincy. Uh, my mother grew up she, uh, on Campbell Street in West Quincy. She was a graduated from Quincy High in 1948. Um, my dad was the first one to graduate high school for, in his family and in college. He went to Boston College High School in Boston College, 46 and 50. And uh, he worked as an executive in, in Manhattan for probably throughout most of the 50s and 60s. I'm the youngest of seven kids. Wow. And uh, I was, most of us were born on Long Island and then we moved to Chicago. He got a big promotion. We moved to sh outside of Chicago for a little while, from 68 to 72. And when we moved back to, Mar to Massachusetts, we ended up in Marshfield. Mm -hmm. And I don't regret a minute of it. Mm -hmm. I loved growing up in Marshfield. It was a great place to grow up. I was halfway between Marshfield Fair and Hummer Rock <laughs> Beach. And you know, for a kid, it was in the 70s. It was fantastic. I graduated uh, from Newman Prep School in, uh, in 1983. Uh, in town and I did some uh, schooling at uh, Northeastern University for a few years, two and a half years, and then I uh, stopped going to Northeastern and I joined the phone company. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I was going to be there for very, very long. <laughs> I thought it might be just a quick pit stop, but 36 years later, it's been a great career. Uh, it's a great, it's been a great company to work for and uh, luckily we have the union there. Uh, we've had to be on strike five times in my 36 years, but it's always paid off. Uh, it's um, it was it's been a great place to work. I was very fortunate. We're all very lucky to have those jobs, and you know it's one thing to have a, a good union job with a company, but it, when your company is as successful as mine has been, then it's we're very fortunate. So yeah. um, just like to give back to some of that to the community and uh, 
help out with. I, there's, I know that in Ward 4, mm -hmm. I see it when I'm knocking on doors and talking to people. They're, I won't even know who they are, and I'll knock on their door, and they'll tell me what union they're from. Is that right? There's a great deal yeah. of uh, union members in the ward, and uh, I'd like to connect with each and every one of them and uh, have our have st uh, talk about our shared experiences and, our, and how we can help each other and, and go from there. So um, from your first uh, time out for Ward 4 to now, uh, Matt, has the message changed from what you're hearing from people, or do they still have some of the same concerns? A lot of the concerns are the same, yeah. but for me, I've learned a lot more just in that, this short time from the, from the uh, special election, which I, I lost in January, and for here, especially like topics like the 99-year lease yes. up at Granite Links. Yep. Um, I, think it's, I think first and foremost, I think it's uh, the, the O'Connell family and Granite Links has done a fantastic job up okay. there. It's a great golf course. It's a beautiful property up there, and it is public property. Uh, the O'Connells have done a fantastic job in the city with a lot of other things that they've done, and I give them all the credit in the world. Mm. I just think that the public needs a better lease, especially if we're going for going to go for 99 years. Uh, that's a long time. We could be 50 years into that, and people look back at us there during this time, and they go, well, what, what were they thinking mm. about do, You know, just giving that kind of thing? So I think financially speaking, it, it can be done over, uh, and I think... Uh, what I like to tell people is that there's uh, what I'd like to see on that, especially a long-term lease like that with public land. And some of this, this isn't just public land. This is, you know, when they first took it over, it was the old dump mm -hmm. and the old Milton dump on the other side. And they used the, the big dig dirt to fill a lot of that in. And, but it is a s starkly different property now than it was then. And there's a lot that could be done up there, not just for private industry, but for public use as well. Okay. So I think these things need to be hashed out. and We need to have a real in-depth discussion about it. They still have 33 years left on their 50-year lease that they have. Uh, so I don't think there should be a rush to this. I think we need to have more oversight. Um, I try to tell people to, co to, to go on YouTube and uh, look up the interview that you did with Tom and Rosalind and uh, and I think that's very informative, but I think we still need to have more community discussions mm -hmm. about it. I don't think there's enough of them. Okay. Uh, those that group is is really trying to educate people about it, and uh, and I think it's it's something that needs to be done. Yeah, you're talking about uh, a couple of attorneys that I that I talked with not too long ago about this, and one of one of their main critiques was that. Um, the, the Quarry Hills Associates folks were allowed to draw up the lease themselves. Um, Which seems to be a flaw. Or so, so you think that's a mistake? Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. I, I, well, there should be some input from the city okay. on that. I mean, we shouldn't just take their, their lease okay. and just go with it. I think we should, you know, especially for it being 99 years. Mm -hmm. This is a long time. And do you think uh, it has to be 99 years? Could it be a different length? Uh, well, I'd be open to that discussion okay. as well, but I, I just think, think that it needs to, we do need more input on it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that could change from it, whether it's the length or whether it's the oversight or whether it's, you know, what they intend to do with the property. Uh, I think a lot of these things need to be discussed. I think the, where it hits Ward 4 more than anybody, I think the financial part of it affects the, the entire city. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but the ramifications of what they end up doing on that property are going to affect the neighborhoods below more than anybody. And I think if you have a lot of development up there, I think it only makes sense, common sense, that they're going to be looking for a second way in and out of there. And any way that any second way in or out of there is going to go through neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So I think this needs to be addressed in advance oh, of getting right. that 99 years as well. Okay. Because, you know, one way in and one way out, I know there's a, a Zoom meeting with the, the state about the uh, intersection at the bottom of it coming up soon. Yes. But, again, if we're just using common sense and you drive through there at any, any point in time or in, with any frequency, it is, we're limited to the land that we have there. So whatever the state may want to come up with, uh, is, it's very limited. It's not like where we live in Kansas, where we have all this land around here. Yes. We, we're very tight as far as land-wise goes. Uh, I, there, there's been talk about a light going up there, but 
I have a hard time believing that the state's going to approve putting a stoplight at that intersection and then back up the highway. Mm. So, again, these things need to be discussed. Okay. And we need to have way more uh, involvement with the neighborhood. I knock on a lot of doors where people, where I start talking about this, and people are hearing this for the first time. Is that right? And I think that's a problem. Okay. So it trans sounds like transparency, transparency is something you're is, concerned about. Yeah. Yes. Okay. 100%. But on both sides, right? Uh, All both sides. For the city and All sides. by the developer and as the, well. And the community needs to get more involved as well. Okay. And But, you know, they need to be informed, but they also need to know what's going on and what how this type of thing could affect them in the future and their kids that they may want to pass their house and their grandkids. I mean, this is 99 years. This is, we're talking about four generations here. Yeah. Well, the developer's been very transparent about uh, wanting to put a hotel, at least one hotel, right. uh, up there. Right. And the administration as well has, yep. has, has uh, verified that. So there's going to be more activity for sure. Exactly. Yep. And it will be bring bigger events. And right. I think this is great for Quincy. And so, you know, I'm not necessarily opposed to them building a hotel up there okay. or doing what they want to do up there. I think, I just think that the, the community, especially Ward 4, which is going to deal with the ramifications of this. I think, you know, you, it's a beautiful 27-hole course. It's, it's a great piece of property up there, and they've done a fine job with it. Expanding with hotels and expanding the property as it is, mm. it will bring bigger events. And those bigger events are going to need more than one way in and one way out. Okay. And uh, I think that's something that needs to be addressed in advance. Okay. Speaking of, so it sounds like, sounds like in de development as a whole, you're not opposed oh, to it. Oh, I'm not opposed to okay. it. I think, and in Quincy, you know, I think the mayor's done a fabulous job over the years with a lot of, lot of projects. And I think the Quincy downtown has come a very long way. The schools are, are fantastic. Um, there's, you know, when you drive down near Pageant Field, going towards the Veterans Stadium, that road going down there is just, it's so much different now, mm -hmm. so much more inviting. Uh, I was out towards there when they were having the concerts. I drove by and just to see what it, what it was like during the concerts. And, you know, people were parked all along the, the street. And it was, it looked great. It looked great. And then we've, we, we've got good plans in, in advance. Um, so I think that we've come a long way. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, as, again, there re we really need to have more public discussion in, in a lot of this kind of stuff. But... Uh, in my head, I'm going on so a lot of different topics here, but yeah. I didn't want to just jump around. So no, well, again, with the Quarry Hills, it sounds like, at least as it's proposed right now, yeah, you would not support it. I would not. Okay, I, I would want to have. Uh, honestly, I think I think what the city should do is to have a, a com uh, commercial real estate, a, a law firm, mm. be involved to to represent the city, to negotiate a a. a, con a a lease. Okay. That right. works for both sides. Okay. That works for both sides. Speaking of developments, um, as you know, an area of Ward 4 has been designated as a transit oriented development zone, I guess you will, or districts, an overlay mm -hmm. district. Um, potentially uh, 11,000 new housing units uh, need mm -hmm. to be added to comply with this new state law. How do you feel about that? So, when I, again, when I'm out there knocking on doors and talking with people, uh, overdevelopment is a, is a big issue. A lot of people have a problem with it. They, and uh, you know, in the right place, in the right situation, I don't think people are opposed to having an apartment building or a condo building put in. I think when you take, I think they have the problem with where you have one or two lots where, where there may have been two houses there before and somebody wants to build something that goes five stories and with no park or very little parking and it doesn't fit in the neighborhood. Um, I think that's the overdevelopment that people are worried about. I, they, they, it changes neighborhoods. And it also doesn't really do much for community building. I mm. think when you build single family houses, which may not be the most profitable for the developers, but for the city, I think it's, it does way more for building a community. Single family houses, you're having people come in and raise their families mm -hmm. there. When you're building apartments and condominiums, it's more of a transient mm -hmm. uh, public. And they come in, a lot of them don't vote, a lot of them don't get involved in things. And I think this is where, partly where, where we have problems in Ward 4 as well, because we already have a, a lot of those types of places. And, and you, you know, when looking over the, the voter list the last time, it, you see the, you can see the, the addresses that mm -hmm. vote, and yep. you can see the, the ones that don't. And, that you right? can, and you can see who is 
participating and who's not. I think a lot of times in Ward 4, as, as far as the voting goes, is that we have a reputation. When I first ran in, in winter, the winter time, I was told by many people in the city that know a lot about the politics. And they were telling me, giving me these very low numbers mm. that we needed. And I was like, there's 17,000 people in the ward. And mm -hmm. you're telling me 800 people are going to, that's going to be the winning vote. And it's, there was 700 people that voted in the, the election that I lost. There's 11,000 registered voters. There needs to be more participation. Okay. And there, there needs to be, if Ward 4 wants to develop, go along with this, and we do, but we, if we want to be involved in it, you need to vote. I think that's important, and I think it's, that's a concept that's not unique to Quincy or anywhere else. I think in any place that, that where you see the lack of participation in the political process, uh, that's, those are the places that don't get as much attention. I know that um, uh, back during the last campaign, the, the incumbent counselor talked about maybe getting a, a, a civic association up and running, you know, holding uh, more community-based events, if you will, uh, you know, social events. Is that something you feel is I think important? It's a, I think it's imperative, yeah. and I think that's something we, ha we really need to do. I think he's changed his position on that. I think he's, he's said that he's, uh, he's more of a contractor who has a lot of time, so he'd rather go out and knock on doors and, and, and go and meet them individually. But I think when you bring people together and you create a community uh, board or any kind of thing like that, just a community access that we can get together and speak and exchange ideas and exchange complaints mm. and exchange, uh, you know, how things are going. I think getting people together is, is a better creating debate conducive to, you know, getting things done and, and having a consensus yeah. a, a, along with the community. Well, I mean, and just exchanging information, if you say most people still haven't heard about the Quarry Hills right. lease, that could be something that right. could be Absolutely. discussed at a gathering like that, sure. Unfortunately, in Ward 4, that my opponent as well has had to recuse himself from the 99-year debate because he's a bartender, he and his wife are bartenders up at the golf course. Mm. Uh, it's unfortunate. Um, I think that hurts the ward because we need to be informed and I think by the ethics codes he's not allowed to speak about it but I, I am trying to get out to, to speak on it and uh, spread the word. Um, talk a little bit about uh, the schools in, in Ward 4. Yeah. Uh, I know that uh, the mayor at some point is hoping to create a new elementary school at the old St. Mary's school. Yes. Uh, do you think and, that's and needed? I th it's a, it's Definitely very needed. much needed. It is? Okay. Uh, I think and, and you know Lincoln Hancock has been a, a great resource for a very long time, but it's an old school. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. needs to be replaced as well. And that, that's, I don't know how much room there is at, at the St. Mary's, but there's enough room that they could do something for the, there and, uh, and uh, to build. You know, when we have these young families coming in, especially when they're, you know, a lot of, the, a lot of people, young families now are buying condominiums as their first home. Yep. So when they're buying the first, first home, they're having the young kids in their condominium at the time before they may venture out to buy another house somewhere else. And there's a lot of the condominiums that are, that are going in, in in Ward 4. And so I know that speaking with some people in the school system is that they're kind of bursting at the seams mm -hmm. in the elementary part. And the elementary schools, they've done a fantastic job with the two high schools. The junior highs are beautiful. But it's time to s start focusing on the elementary schools. Ward 4 is in desperate need of it. I think, uh, like I said before, that the Lincoln Hancock School has serviced very well for a very long time, but it's, it needs a lot of work. And it, you know, the way they build schools nowadays, you could take that same land and build what they would build on there nowadays would be so much more efficient than mm. it would than the old school would be. So okay, so you'd be in favor of getting Lincoln Hancock. I think it's needed in line. Yeah, definitely for needed. the next replacement. Yes. Okay, um, Ward Four arguably is probably one of the most, if not the most, diverse wards it is. demographically it in, is, yeah. in the city. Is enough being done? Do you think to uh, to communicate to all of the different ethnic groups in Ward Four? Or I don't know the answer to that. To okay. tell you the truth, I'm not sure if, the, if enough is being done for it. But I, 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 I know that you know you go through different neighborhoods. I, and I said it during my the the, the special election, mm -hmm. getting to know the ward. Now my family has been in the ward. My f ancestors moved into the ward in the mid 1800s, wow. and they all worked in the. A lot of them worked in the quarries and uh, digging granite out, or you know. Um, 
uh, businesses on the side. Some fashion in the um, industry, yeah. So, it, so my family's been there for a very long time, and it's, um, and, and the, you know, at the time when the Irish were moving in there, they were the diverse, they were That's the, right. they were the immigrants, and they were the ones who, you know, we, you saw that, especially in the, the, the pandemic of uh, 1918, mm -hmm. and my great uncle, Daniel McDougal, was the first one who passed away in Quincy. Really? For the, in there, during that time, yeah. And, uh, it was a sad story that was passed down through my family history, mm. but it was, you know, the Irish came over to work in the quarries. It was part, it was a big part of the industry. Uh, and um, nowadays, there's, there's not as many Asians as in Ward 4 as there are like in North Quincy. Mm -hmm. I think there's a big Vietnamese mm -hmm. population there, and I, it, it's, I sometimes I've broken in with some of the people and there's, Again, through my union connections, I know there's, there's a few people that are in, in unions, like second or third generations that are in unions that I've uh, had great conversations with. They're gonna support me this time around and help me get around to the Vietnamese uh, community that we have there. And I think that's great. I think, you know, I think I welcome all mm -hmm. the, div the diversity that we can get. I think it's what makes Quincy great. I think uh, in Quincy is a very diverse, city as it is as a whole. Ward, Ward 4, as you said, is very much like that. Uh, you can go up in that neighborhood up behind um, Water Street and Copeland Street and there's a lot of uh, foreign speaking people that, you know, yeah, yeah, I definitely have a hard time sure. exchanging with, but I'm trying to find ways to do it. Okay. Uh, bring people out who speak their language and have, have a discussion with them about it. Have them uh, registered to vote. Mm. You know, I think everybody should participate. I think uh, renters also should participate. So now I see some of the uh, as this as well as where I'm living now. So I had lived at 64 Willard Street. My mom, we sold our house in Marshfield back in the 80s. My mother was from the West Quincy neighborhood, and I'm related to the McDonald family who own the Common Market and the oh. insurance agency across the street and the Fish and Chicken. Um, my mother's sister was Bernie McDonald, who they, my uncle Tom owned the uh, insurance agency, McDonald's insurance oh, okay. agency. And so she came home when she was still the house. It was, it was a big house and all the kids were gone. She was there alone. So it was time for her to go. My dad passed away and young at 52. So yeah, she I know was you alone. Were, you were only a teenager at the time. Yeah, I was only 16. Yeah, okay. So it was coming back to, to Quincy and so now I she bought the, con the condominium at 64 Willard I lived there when I was going to Northeastern mm -hmm. with her and then I kind of moved out in the 90s and she passed away in 99 and I bought it from the estate oh, I see. Okay. so I had lived there from 99 up until last November when mm -hmm. they redistricted me out of Ward 4 uh, I was had been in Ward 4 since 1986 and voted all the way through there but so I was committed enough to run that I moved out so I was going to try to rent the, the condo but then I ended up selling it um, so now I'm living at Lincoln Heights kind of temporarily oh, sure. to see what happens. But I find that up in Lincoln Heights, it's a very diverse population in there because I've also been trying to organize those people to come out to vote. I see. Okay. So it's, but just going around and trying to talk to people again, I find the language barrier, but you know, it's a good community and it's a, it's a nice people, you know, are kind of transient in mm -hmm. a lot of ways. A lot of young people, uh, a lot of people from other countries, um, I think it. I think this is what America is all about, mm. and I think it's. This is you know, uh, we're facing a lot of different things like the na what's going on over at Eastern Nazarene College, and you know I support them in what they're doing. I, na the Nazarenes are a Christian or Christian university, and this is what they do, and I believe that this is what Jesus would want us to do. So I think this is uh, something that we can embrace. I don't think they're people that are gonna harm our community. I think we can, if we all treat this right, they can add to the community just like everybody else has over the years. Okay. Just like my family did. One, uh, you know, overall factor throughout the entire city is traffic. And in Ward 4, there are, there's almost two Ward 4s because it's cut in half by the Southeast Expressway, right? Correct. Um, is there anything that the city on its own can do to so try and thing, make things flow a little smoother? So I would hope so. And I, so, and I try to say to people, I, I don't have the silver bullet here. <laughs> I don't, I'm not, not going to tell you that I have all the answers for the traffic here. And anybody who does is lying to mm. you. 
I think this is an issue that's gone on a very long time. Like I said, I've lived at I lived at 64 Willard Street since 1986, which was basically an on ramp. Mm -hmm. And the traffic that came down from Corey Street going onto that, it was infuriating at times. You know, you'd come out just to walk on the sidewalk, and these cars would be flying by. So I've dealt with it personally in my life, and so. Like you said, it is a tale of two cities yeah. in Ward 4. We have, it all surrounds the, the expressway from East Milton Square to Archbishop Williams. We're on both sides of the expressway between, uh, th there's a lot more cars on the road now than there has been and it's probably gonna get worse. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, uh, I don't know if there's any one right answer for this. I think every neighborhood is different. I was speaking with some people off um, Doble Street and West Street and I went to speak with them at about four o'clock in the afternoon and they would they were like well you're here at the perfect time and just coming off just cutting cutting through there going down to Center Street mm -hmm. West Street to Center Street through their neighborhood back down onto Willard Street it was incredible yeah. and not just cars like big trucks like this big Amazon truck that was coming down and he wasn't making deliveries he was a just traveling a through. big truck yeah and what that tells you is that Waze or Google Maps or any of those things they're sending people through these neighborhoods so one of the things that I've always thought of and I've done a little bit of research about different municipalities around the country that have have this problem with Waze and Google Maps and all these other uh, companies that send people through the neighborhoods for a shortcut if there have been any other uh, lawsuits and I think that's something that we should look into okay. and participate in if we can. It's a real problem with a lot of these uh, those, these neighborhoods and not every neighborhood that I go to that has this problem and they talk about it, mm -hmm. they talk about it as if their neighborhood is the only one, yeah. but it's not. It's the entire ward. It's an inherent problem that we have where we are sur we surround the ex Southeast Expressway. Yeah, it's a major it's transportation it is, hub for sure. And I think yeah. Brian Pelmucci tried to do as much as he could, especially yep. like making some roads one way and and uh, putting signs up for do not enter mm -hmm. on certain times of the, of the day. And I think some of that stuff was effective. I still think we can do a little bit more. I don't have the exact answers. I'd love to get into the weeds on that and, and learn more about okay. that and, and get feedback from the community to what we want. Uh, some people say, well, we need more police there. And I say, well, police aren't going to be there every day for traffic. And, and I, I, I agree with you, mm -hmm. but I think that's, uh, I don't know if that's the answer for it. Okay. Uh, and I don't know if the city is going to allocate those kind of resources for that. I think sometimes it could be better. I think if you have a, some sort of, sort of police presence at real chronic areas and the people that are going through these areas on a daily basis, if they have in the back of their mind that there could be a police officer around the corner, it may change their behavior. Okay. And I think that some of that needs to happen. Too. Okay. Do you think that uh, the MBTA is serving Ward 4 effectively, Matt? So I went for a very long time. I worked as a walker at, uh, in the walking crew at, for Verizon in downtown Boston, mm -hmm. and I took the train quite a bit. Mm. I would have sometimes try to walk down to Wallace Station from where I was on Willard Street, but a lot of times I ended up on the 215 bus, which would run from Ashmont to Quincy Center. And uh, either way, because I was kind of in the middle. So I, I think the bus routes do a pretty good job. I really do, I, as somebody who has honestly used them yep. for, a for a long time. Um, I know that we were having, the where I'm living now in Lincoln Heights, they were having an issue about them changing the path of the, I think it's the 239 bus that comes around there, and I think it goes to Avon eventually, but it comes out of Quincy Center. And the people up in uh, Lincoln Heights were having the problem with it because, you know, Lincoln Heights is kind of a big development, and we're a winter area. Right. So now they wanted to move the bus stop, I think, more down towards Copeland Street, which is quite a walk just from the Center Street location where it is now down to there, but if you live in the back of the, of the apartment complex and you're it's quite a walk in another January and February yeah, yeah. when it's bitter cold right. and then to walk down to Copeland uh, Street it's just that's a long walk okay so I think that in where it's coming down there and uh, to right down to the to the you know we're not that close mm -hmm. that that neighborhood 
isn't that close to Quincy, Quincy Adams. It's, it's quite a block. It's, you know, if, you're, if you need to be at work at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the morning, you've got to leave a block real early in the morning to get there so right, if you're right. walking. So. Okay, so it could be better. It could be better. Yeah. We, I mean, you know, I think there's, there are pluses and, and minuses to everything that we're going to discuss here, but I, and everything is a work in progress, and the city's changing at a very rapid pace, mm. so I don't think there's anything that's, that may have been settled in the past that may have to come up for rediscussions okay. as well. You know, I think this is a, it's always a fluid situation. Yeah. So would you have regular kind of community meetings? I definitely would. would. Okay. I would uh, try to, try to, so I'm at the end of my career at Verizon, and uh, I'm hoping to, hoping that they give us a retirement package at the end of the year. I have 36 years, and I would definitely participate in that. Okay. And I would uh, be able to, a lot more time. Okay, at the, the end of this year. At the end of this year, oh, okay. I'm hoping so. Okay. I may do it anyway, right. whether they do it or not, right. but uh, it, de it depends on whether I win or not. Right. Uh, so, um, and so I, you know. You would have more time to do I those have things. more time, yeah. Yeah, okay, maybe at, at the Southwest Middle School or something like oh, that. Oh, I'm sorry. So, yeah. so yes, uh, definitely in the Southwest Middle School. Okay. I think the, uh, I, my opponent had said it before as well, and I think it's a good idea to, to access the, the QA, um, Get the, it's on Coltman Street, the, where the food bank is. Uh, the that, Southwest Community Center? Yeah, the yeah. Southwest Community Center. Uh, QCAP's new place. GCAP, yeah, yeah, I always. <laughs> but so, QCAP. But so it's, that's an excellent center. There's yes. a lot of people that access it anyways there. Yes. So uh, for, especially for a lot of the people who access it there to discuss with them to have the meetings there. Okay. But I wouldn't just limit it to that. Okay. Because there's, like I said, there are different people in the ward. It is a, it, you know, ec uh, economically, uh, you look at different families in different neighborhoods in the ward. So I think we can, uh, I would love for everybody to get together. And there were certain times the way we, we, I would encourage everybody okay. to get together. But there was also times when, you know, when it's convenient for the people. You don't want to just make it, make these meetings like, so that where people can't participate. Sure. You want people to participate. I think it's, I think Ward 4 really needs to have it more than, a lot of other places because, you know, the seat that I'm running for, if you look back on uh, the, the people who have held the office, many of them weren't from, Qu didn't grow up in Qu and go to Quincy Public Schools just like I did. Mm. There are other wards in this city, and if you didn't grow up in that neighborhood, you're not going to win that mm. seat. So I think this, that shows you the diversity, that shows you the kind of part of the what's going on in Ward 4 and the dynamics of it politically and as well as socially, I think it it's, can be more of a transient, a part of it mm -hmm. can be more of a transient neighborhood. And, uh, and um, I just think that that's the way it is and I'm willing to try to bring people together for that. Okay, will you have a uh, web online presence? 100%, 100% okay. yes. And uh, I will have access, show access to people and try to get back to them in a timely manner. Okay. I know that it's a complaint for a lot of people, especially when people are in office for quite some time and they, you know, become busier and busier and things get slower and slower. I, Brian Pomucci is a really, he's a friend of mine. I like him a lot and I supported him all his whole tenure. Uh, but I hear that at the doors. Brian was great at the beginning and towards the end it kind of fell off. And I think that's kind of natural. Mm. I think in this, this is when you have people that are in serving for a, a long time, you know, things get to be maybe mundane for them. And, you know, you don't want to listen to the complaints as much as you did the, when you were first running and first in office. But uh, I think it's imperative that people get, are responded to with their complaints and their concerns. Okay. So. Anything else you'd like to add, Matt, before we wrap up today? Uh, I'll probably, when I walk out the door, I'll think <laughs> about three more things <laughs> okay. to, to speak on. But uh, I think we're, we're good. I think, uh, really, I just want to send out the, the message that I, uh, I'm committed to running for the, for, for the people of the ward. Uh, I, like I said, I like t the mayor right now. I like Ann Mahoney, who's running against him. I think both of them are great people to, to be able to run our city. But I'm not running to serve either one of them. I'm running to serve the people of Ward 4. And uh, that's always going to be my intention here. It's always going to be my, my purpose and goal. And that's how I plan to uh, govern from the City Council if I'm lucky enough to win. 
Great. Well, thanks again for coming over here and uh, sharing your story with us and our viewers here at QATV. And we look forward to seeing you on the campaign trail. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate the work you guys do here. And uh, thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. And thank you for watching us here at AM Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. We will see you next time. Thank you.